Welcome to The Grade Cricketer on YouTube. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, hello, uh, warmest of welcomes, and um, just stick with it. That's all I'd say. Uh, <laughs> It's a, special, it's a special day for us uh, as we prepare to welcome our latest guest onto the show. Uh, and we do so thanks to Akko, uh, a company where basically two guys called us after what happened at the Gabba and said, we'd like to support you continuing to talk about your sadness about the Asian century. Cheers. And we said, okay, sure, that's fine, as we wiped away a solitary tear. Um, which brings us to today. Uh, we are talking to a superstar, not just of Indian cricket, but of world cricket. Uh, obviously, that's bittersweet for us because he destroyed our country's sense of safety about six months ago uh, at the Gabba. And we'll ask him about that, him and his naked bat. Um, he joins us from England where he's preparing for a little something called the World Test Championship Final. I don't know what that is because of overrates or something. Yeah. But um, Nevertheless, it's such a pleasure uh, to welcome Shubman Gill. Uh, Shubman, welcome to the Great Cricketer, brother. Thank you, thank you. Pleasure, guys. How uh, are you doing? We're doing very well, thank yeah, you. That's very yeah. kind. No one ever asks no us, ever asks us that how we're going. Yeah. Uh, but um, I was good in January. Oh yeah, yeah, I was good. <laughs> it felt really good until you came along. <laughs> frankly, uh, this must be a very big moment for you talking to us. Uh, the first question is: Do you have a clue who we are at all? Uh, it's actually a very big moment for me, actually. I'm talking to someone for the first time, you know, who's on a podcast. I think you guys are on a podcast or something. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty big moment for me. Yeah, yeah. it's big a different moment. world, man, the podcast <laughs> world. Uh, Shubman, we've got, we got a bit of time to chat with you, so um, yeah. we'll, we'll ease into it. We'll start. We'll, I want to start from the beginning. Uh, you, you grew up in Punjab. I'm telling you things you already know. Uh, you, you had a bat in your hand at age three. Some might say that's yeah. starting a little late mm. uh, in India. Um <laughs> All great Indian players seem to have grown up with a special way of learning how to play cricket, you know, like Boomer was bowling Yorkers inside, the, like hitting the edge between the wall and the floor so no sound was made so as to not annoy his mum. Mm. We talked to Robin Uthapa who, who played cricket with the classic swinging ball in sock. Um, what, what are your memories of playing cricket as a kid and, like, did you do anything unique to become especially skillful? Well, I think when I first started playing cricket, there were, like, I didn't have anybody to throw balls to me. So I used to hit on the ball and the, the ball used to come back to me. So I used to try to keep the streak going on. So I used to keep it for 50, 60 balls continuously, you know, just so that the streak could go on. So that's how I basically started playing cricket. And then my dad saw me one day and then he thought, you know, like it's it's pretty cool for a three or four year old kid to keep continu continuously doing that. So that's when he actually thought, okay, he might be he might be good in this, and that's when we actually like started practicing and having fun. So you could, I know your your dad's sort of been your coach your entire life, Shubham. But have you had any other coach at any point? And how does your dad deal with Ravi Shastri? Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I don't really had uh, any coach other than my dad. Like, not any primary coach, but. In the under 16s and under 14s, we used to have like state coaches and stuff like that. Mm. But uh, my dad has been my primary coach throughout. Mm. Mm. Shubman, one thing that happens in Australia is that like when you're sort of 13, 14, 15 years old, we play all these competitions where um, quite often you have to retire when you're on 50 mm. uh, so that everybody else gets a go. And then we get all these stories from India about these kids coming through who are scoring <laughs> like double hundreds, triple yeah. hundreds, and you were, you were no different. You know, yeah, the guys were getting a 1,000 and stuff. Like, mm. I think that you made – I don't have the – you know the uh, the number in front of me, but you made some score of sort of a double hundred or a triple hundred when you were thirteen. Did you were you upset that you didn't go on to to hit five hundred or a thousand in that game? No, actually, uh, I made a like in our under sixteen districts. That's like a pretty competitive cricket, so the players don't usually retire after you know getting a fifty or a hundred. They keep on playing because obviously they want their team to win. It's a three day matches, like a ninety over game, so. I made a 350 in one game mm. and then I made a 400. Mm. But yeah, players in India, like they don't like, I don't think anyone, any batsman likes to retire after getting a 50 mm. or after getting 100. <laughs> did you just, you know, just those in He those, made 400. With those innings, did you just sort of throw it away at the end? Were you yeah. disappointed or? <laughs> no, actually, I was, uh, I was not out when I uh, made a 400. Yeah. I was very, I was very sad when I got out on 350, to be honest. <laughs> What do you like? Just throw, what do you, yeah. you throw your kit? I, I or you thought yeah. I went on for 
a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah me yeah. too, actually. Uh, do you remember those innings really well? Were they were they perfect innings, or was it like a close LBW shout? You know, <laughs> before you were twenty, really drop catches. Did someone drop Shubin yeah, on zero? I, I got like a couple of chances, so I wanted to make sure you know I get my full batting because I got some chances. Yeah. So yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you couldn't. Um, <laughs> Shubman, uh, let's talk about the, the Under-19 World Cup. There's some mm. piece of media re- recently uh, via Rahul Dravid about just how important the Under-19s kind of incubation system is yeah. in India. Uh, you scored 372 runs in the 2018 Under-19 World Cup, including 102 not out against Pakistan, and it prompted Dada himself. We've got a few questions about Dada. Mm. Um, saw of Ganguly saying he saw a bit, of, referring to you, he saw a bit, of, a bit of Brian, Lara, and Kane Williamson in you. Um, how much confidence does it give you to know that Dada thought this about you? Mm. I mean, obviously, as a youngster, that's all you want. You know, people uh, people who you have looked up to, people like Saurabh Gangli, people like Rahul Dravid, giving you uh, confidence. And that's basically what every youngster wants. And obviously, when you when you hear compliments like that from such great players, it obviously boosts your confidence. And you would want to, you are furthermore motivated to do well whenever you get a chance for the country or for the India or domestic, whatever you play. Everyone, everyone's been so um, everyone's been heaping praise on Rahul Dravid, you know, for sort of bringing through this young generation of, of people, including yourself and you know Washington Sundar and and all these all these guys that are going to dominate cricket for years. But what's what's Rahul Dravid like as a coach, and does he get as angry as he did in that cred ad? <laughs> no, honestly, <laughs> like that uh, side of Rahul sir, I've never like I don't think anyone has ever seen that side of Rahul sir. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he is he's that kind of a coach who doesn't like to tweak much in players. He like he's not that kind of a coach who would you know go on to the player and say okay improve this on your technique or do this or do that. He is uh, he's the kind of a coach who would more focus on the mental aspect of life. You know, tactical aspect. How can you approach your game? How can how can you be mentally tougher when you are in a tough situation? So that's how he helps, to be honest. Like people would think because he was so technically solid, like he would, you know, tell, uh, like he'd be telling the players lots of technical stuff, but he works on uh, more the tactical and the mindset of players. Mm. Do you have a preference in terms of what you like from coaches? And because I know in Australia we have a lot of coaches around who love yelling at guys or telling mm. them to change how you hold your mm. bat or whatever. We've heard stories about test players being told to change their grips before a Boxing Day test and stuff mm. like that. Like, do do you have a preference of the sort of coaching you like at this stage of your career? I mean, uh, like I like honestly, uh, like I've not been told a major technical change in my game like for a long long time I can't remember someone telling me you know to change a major thing in my batting for the last two three years so I think the way they coach here is I think it's a little bit different because you would like the players they play so much of cricket and they've been playing for so long it's a little bit difficult for them if you ask them to change their grip or you know to change to make a huge technical change Mm -hmm. so the the coaches try tend to make changes that would you know be more of tactical or the technique that they have they'll try to strengthen uh, the players around that technique rather than to change the whole thing mm. and to start from scratch so when you say no one has met, wanted to make technical changes you didn't read Brad Hogg's comments uh <laughs> <laughs> about you saying, oh, I love him, but there's just one area on yeah. attack. He's just a uh, bit out here. Just yeah. out here that, yeah. that you, you didn't read that piece in <laughs> timesnownews.com? I definitely haven't done what about What about, okay, hypothetical, Shubman, hypothetical. You know, Rahul Dravid, yeah. he comes up to you at training and he gets in year and he says, you know, Shubman, maybe just try this. And then you go and tell your dad and your dad's like, no, do the opposite. Who do you choose? Yeah. To be honest, I would just listen. I would. I wouldn't listen to either of these two. I would just. Listen. I would just listen to myself and think, like, what do I want to do? Do I want to do that, or I don't want to do that? Love that. Yeah. That was the yeah. secret third option, and that was a test. <laughs> and you passed. Yeah. <laughs> Because oh. at the end of the day, when you get out, the only person that will be regretting the most is yourself. Exactly. You know, you'll be thinking, like, like, why did I listen to them when I could have just got out doing my thing? At least I wouldn't have had anyone to blame it to yeah so see that's the yeah. difference because i always like to blame other people when i got out exactly so that's the that's where we differ that's why you played threes <laughs> <laughs> were you aware shubman coming through the ranks before oh, we want to get into talking about your time in australia and what you did to us but um were you were you aware 
uh, of how much competition there was from other Indians, uh, other Indian kids to get to the top. I mean, everything I read about you is that you, you almost seem to be the anointed one. And I can, I, I actually can't imagine what that must be like to, mm. to be coming through the ranks and to wonder whether it, you know, you're the best out of every kid in India. And I know you'll be humble about that and say, well, you've got a long way to go and whatever, but how aware of that were you? Or did you just play and enjoy the game? Honestly, like I wasn't, I think I wasn't aware at all. It's just that when you keep playing, you just want to perform at the place that you are in. You don't think too far ahead. Okay, I have have to, you know, perform here. Then I'll maybe get selected there and then I'll have to perform there and then maybe I'll get selected further ahead. I wasn't thinking like that at all. It was just that whatever I was playing at that particular time, I just wanted to do my best there. Mm. And then obviously when you're like, I think that's what, uh, that's why it's so important to be in the present and not think too far, too far ahead of yourself. Mm. And I think if you, like there was a, when you think too far ahead of yourself, you tend, you tend to get a bit desperate and you know, the things then I feel like when you get a little desperate, the things kind of start slipping yeah. out of your hands rather than if you just try to let things come to you and just keep doing your thing. If I could ask you a question about sort of superstitions, Shubman. I mean, I've noticed in your 13 test innings so far, you've only faced the first ball once mm. and you got a duck. So I'm guessing you're, yeah. you're never going to do that again. Yeah. Is, is that, is that, no. is that no. <laughs> like, how does, how does that work out when you're walking out to bat with Rohit? Is he mm. just like, Get out of the way, you young. So I'm taking, first, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or do you say to him, you take the first you take ball. Take the first one, right? <laughs> so in the first, I remember in the first, uh, in my debut, uh, my uncle was kind enough. He said, "Okay, I know you're under pressure. You're making your debut, uh, so I'll take the strike. It's okay." But he was so, and he took the strike in that match in both the innings. And then in the next match, I was supposed to take the strike, but my uncle didn't play. Rohit Bhai played. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so Rohit Bhai, so Rohit himself said, you know, uh, like, okay, I know you're the youngster, it's okay, I'll take the strike. And then from there on, he was taking the strike until that match against England. Yeah. I don't know why I said it to him, I'll take the strike in this <laughs> one. I don't know why I said it, but then obviously it didn't work for me. I got out on the, I think on the third or fourth ball on a duck. But yeah, that won't be happening again, I think, soon. <laughs> when do you guys, uh, I mean, you look, I've opened the batting as well. We're both the same. Yeah, but um, right, yeah. when do you actually work that out? Like, is it when you're getting your kit on in the change room? Is it when you're mm. walking out to bat? Like, do you feel like it's an awkward conversation? You've yeah. got to have like a girl on a date or something. Yeah. Like, Are you both like, running to the non-strikers in? No, yeah. How does honestly, it, where does it happen? It's, it's pretty, uh, like, it can happen anytime. Like, once I remember, we were walking, like, we were always, uh, almost in the middle and we were tapping the crease and then I asked her, can you please take this? Because <laughs> <laughs> cause the, the baller was going, I think it was, yeah. So, Mitch was going uh, on his run-up and I was like, I was trying to go on the non-strike runs. Where, where's the non-strike run? And then I asked, <laughs> so it's like, can which, you please take the strike? Which, you said, Mitch, yeah, which game was that? Yeah, it was. I think uh, in the first innings in the uh, the Gabba test. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what yeah. That makes sense. Uh, have you also have you also got a red hanky in your pocket? Do you, do you bat with a red hanky as well? Is that a thing? Yeah. Is that a, is yeah. that a, is that a tribute to Steve Waugh? Steve Waugh had one of those it, as well. It's it's it's. I don't think it's a superstition to be honest, but it's like I like when we first started playing. We we have like red ball cricket. Most of our age group cricket is red ball. We don't really have white ball cricket until the under 19 world cups and stuff like that mm. so when as when we first started playing with white ball that's when you tend to wear the colored kit otherwise you're not you can't uh, carry a red handkerchief mm. in a red ball game because mm. the umpire obviously won't let you you know wear it on top of your uh, trouser right. so i don't know why for some reason i like i like the color that is so i started wearing that uh, red handkerchief and then obviously when you like score if you do well you score and you tend to go with whatever you're doing at that moment mm. so that's one thing that kind of uh, stuck with me and i keep uh, like i keep it with me all the time yeah uh well on behalf of he goes i'm not sure the rest of australia but i would like to acknowledge how excellently you played uh in australia over the summer we're still kind of getting over it uh to, like to, to be honest like as australians when there's a young batsman who comes to the crease and we've never really heard of him because we just live in our own bubble in mm. Australia. As a nation, we expect to eat them for dinner. You know, mm. we, we like we just say, who is this bloke? Never heard of him. Someone's going to bump him or nick him <laughs> off. Doesn't matter. See you later. Let's get the other guys in. Rough him up. Instead, you look just completely comfortable. 
Um, were, were you surprised at how well you went in Australia or did you actually expect it? Honestly, the first over that I faced off back comments, I, it was like, I, I don't think I even touched one ball off the bat. It was like, and I remember when we were going in the crease, one of our bowlers told me, okay, the wicket is slow. It, it's coming a bit of spongy. It's a bit slow. Like you, you'll manage it. And the first or maybe the second ball I get beaten and I hear the noise from the keeping gloves of Tim Paines, the, the ball's like, tuck. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Somebody said the wicket was slow, but it was like flying off uh, the wicket. Uh. And I couldn't get ball on my bat in the first over. And then the second over, I played one ball. And then I was like, like okay, now I can go on from it. But yeah, the first over was like, it was really like, I was trying, I was trying just so hard to get the ball on the bat, but I could This is a, a very Australian kind of question because we like to concern ourselves with things that are sort of around the game, but not actually mm. the game. So I guess what I want to know is like, what were they saying to you uh, <laughs> out there? And I know at one point, I think Camo said he was going to bump you. Uh, some point in the series, but like, what kind of chat did you get? And I'm not talking about the Tim Payne, Ravi Ashwin stuff or whatever. Like, you know, what sort of talk was there towards you specifically? Uh, so me and uh, Paddy, we we were there in the KKR. Uh, mm. So we were like teammates there, and uh, we have a pretty good bond. And when we were there, he, I remember giving he gave an interview or something uh, to the KKR. Uh, uh, management saying that oh we'll have uh, we'll have the chin music going on or something like something like that mm. and then uh, when I was and then when I was batting he was con- uh, continuously you know like trying to bounce me and I was leaving one I was like continuously leaving one and then after the match or something I there was like a press conference and I said if they have their uh, Chin music going on. We know that we know the moves to you know dance to that. Mm. So yeah, he was the banter was going on pretty well there. Yeah. When I said that, he was like, "Oh, where are your dance moves now? Where are your dance moves now?" <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps uh, well perhaps some of the best learning actually came off the field um, from your dad actually after he got ninety one at the Gabba, and your dad was quoted as saying, "A century would have been good for his confidence. He was playing so well, and I don't know why all of a sudden he played away from his body." When you heard this, did you go home and ask your dad how many tests? How many test centuries have you got? <laughs> no, I didn't. To be honest, like I also thought that was a pretty shit shot to be played at. You know, <laughs> and, I really, and I really wanted to uh, score a century and uh, see my team through. So I was honestly really, really disappointed at the way I got out. But yeah, other than that, like, yeah, he also told me the same thing. You know, you should have got a century. I yeah, know I was pretty disappointed. I can see he's also disappointed. But the good thing was we won the test match. So everything was set to that. Yeah. yeah if yeah, we would have, you you would have yeah. drawn or lost the match, then, you know, it would have been even more devastating. Yeah. Just just on that, Shubman, I, and I want to refer to your dad as well and, and what he said, but in a different way. So so you ha- you make your debut on Boxing Day. You're taking on Stark, Hazelwood and Cummins. You make 45, 35, not out. Then 50 and 31 in Sydney. Miss out on the first innings at the Gabba. Then make 91 in one of the all-time great victories. Um, the performance has wounded our national spirit. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't think it was because of the runs. It was because of the way it happened. Uh, and what I mean is, like, not only do you make 91 and Washi makes 80 runs across both innings and takes four far um, and kills our dreams, but then both of your dads react by saying they should have scored hundreds. <laughs> so, then they, so you've won against the odds and the dads aren't happy yet. So, uh, and I think that's the bit where Australians go, wait, they, they, they've beaten us, but their parents think they could have done better. How scared should Australians be about how good India can get if they're not even happy at the moment? <laughs> I'm honestly not sure, like, uh, how to answer that question. But yeah, like, as <laughs> when we, as youngsters, when we grow up, that's how we tend to play our cricket or that's how we like to play our cricket. We like to finish the jobs, you know, as a, as a, as a batsman, there's no better feeling to finishing a job for the team. And like, as my dad is my coach, so obviously that's a great set of satisfaction and enjoyment for him as well. If I'm able to do that. And I think that's pretty much all he meant. How Chilling. does um yeah, yeah that's that's cold blooded mm, oh, mm, Jesus mm. Uh, <laughs> how uh, how does the team feel about Washington Sundar's dog Gabba? 
I mean, like when we, I think we were six down for uh, 190 or 200 and odd. And that partnership that uh, Washington's and Shadu's partnership, that was like, that was gold for us. Like, and the way that they played and the way that they, you know, dominated, it was, it was so exciting and mm. it was so the knock was that that partnership was so advent- adventurous for us to you know see to witness it from outside and everyone was i remember everyone was just so so happy about it that you know we have a chance we have a chance to make a comeback in this game if we bowl well in the in the third innings of the game so everyone was very excited yeah, yeah. and and so obviously at the end of the game after such a great game that Washington played, he declared to the team, I will name my dog Gabba. <laughs> I also I also didn't know about that until I saw like a Instagram post or something where, you know, you get those reports like he's going to name his dog, dog. But I'm not pretty sure even like if he did that or not. Can yeah. you take us into the change room, if possible, mm. of where things are about to swing into India's favour at the Gabba? And you're on the brink of an all-time great victory. Tell, talk to me about Ajinkya Rahane's oh. vibe because I'm seeing him on the camera. Oh. He looks ice cold. I mean, we think it's a mafioso thing. Like yeah. he, did, like I would not mess with Ajinkya <laughs> Rahane. Yeah, he seems like a cool dude, yeah. but underneath, surely, like you're afraid of him or something. Like, what's what's Rahane saying <laughs> as things are, are starting to move in your favour? I I think Ajuba is is one of the, you know, the coolest person you ever met. He's so calm. He's so mm. like poised all the time. Mm. And as the match was coming closer to us, I remember uh, Rishabh or uh, Rishabh, yeah, Rishabh played a scoop to Nathan and uh, we weren't at a great position at that time. And he was, Rishabh was just, you know, playing the way he does. And I remember every time he would play a shot, somebody in the desk would go, oh, sh-. like if he, <laughs> if he gets out now, like we'll be we'll be like you know yeah, yeah. pretty much gone but, uh our tail enders they they're like not that good because uh, natrajan he didn't play a single ball in the nets the whole series the whole series he didn't bat for a single ball and he had to face mitch stark pat cummins and hazelwood yeah. So, yeah we knew that the guys in there would have to you know finish the job otherwise like there, there won't be any draw. Either we'll lose or we'll win. Oh my god! So we were close. Mm, we were, we were really close. <laughs> yeah. 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 Can you uh, can you can you tell us about your you know coming home after that series? You know, were you were you, were you offered to you know cut a kangaroo cake like a like a jinko was, or uh, you know what was what was going on when you got home at the airport? We were, we were told to stay in the houses because we had like COVID uh, oh. restrictions going on. But yeah, I, like I was pretty uh, sure I'm gonna stay in the house, not go anywhere else. And then I see. Uh, on my Instagram, Natrajan is having a festival <laughs> where he goes. And Ajinke, Ajinke is also, you know, having that all that crowd yeah. around him. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, man, I'm the only one not celebrating this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Shuman, um, when, uh, when England came to India earlier this year, many people in England felt that the huge spinning wickets just weren't cricket mm. uh, because they were too <laughs> heavily skewed to favour India's bowlers, I think. <laughs> that was what it was. Um, so with that in mind, what sort of wickets are you expecting when you play them in England? Uh, and do you think they'll be arranged so as to advantage uh, England's seam attack? I think both our teams have a pretty good seam attack, so they, they might work against them. So, like... Whatever the wickets they'll have, it will be the same for both the teams. And I think our uh, the whole Indian batting and bowling attack is balanced enough to you know handle any sort of wickets that they give us. Mm. England uh, are like rotating a lot of their bowlers at the moment, trying to get the right combinations and stuff. Are, are you expecting them to settle on one attack during the series with you guys? Uh, and who's their most dangerous bowler in your mind? I think uh, the the combination of Anderson and Broad is, uh, I think they that sets them pretty well because uh, both of them are like they're different kind of bowlers and I think they will stick with these two and then whosoever would be the third bowler or the fourth bowler like as an all-rounder of Chris Wokes or uh, mm. you know Ben Stokes. Mm. But I don't think Archer would be available for the for the series. But mm. let's see. But yeah, I think they'll stick to these two and then the third seamer would keep rotating as the 
see this goes through. In the in that home series, uh, Shubman, I mean, how funny was it watching Axar Patel just destroy every English batsman? Was that was that enjoyable? It must have been so good. Yeah, it was really uh, like he he's been with me for uh, quite a long time. We have had so many India A series together. And it was just so fun watching him do, do, you know, so good in the test cricket. And he was always bound to, you know, do that because, like, I have seen him going through playing some great cricket over the time, but just not getting the chance, just not able to, you know, play for India for some certain circumstances. I remember he got a chance once he got injured. He was the 12th man. He went into field and you got injured. How sad is that? Mm. Like you're not even playing the game, but you get injured. Mm. Fielding for the 12th man. But it was pretty great to see someone like him doing so well. Mm. Shubman Gill, thanks so much for taking, I think, what must have been about 37 questions uh, from two <laughs> guys. You've got no idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who they are or whether you'll ever see them again. But, um, <laughs> mate, really appreciate your time. It's late in the UK. You've been very generous with us. Wishing you all the best for the final, for the India series, everything beyond. Um, thank you for destroying our country uh, earlier this year. And um, I'm sure we'll see you again, mate. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was a pleasure.